Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Welcome to uh, this week's episode of What the Hell's Happening on Dead by Daylight. Uh, with me today is uh, Sebastian. Baris. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, Baris. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> they know that. They know Everybody that. knows you. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having so, me. So, uh, Bjorn, thank you for making this possible again. Uh, we should thank our mods. Do you want to give a little yeah, hello? Yeah, I'll give a little shout out. We got um, Moonbot, Murph, Not Queen, uh, Shiroku, uh, Vorfidus? Vorfidus? Vorfidus. And Suggestive. Mm. And Clyde is here also. Oh, yeah, sorry. Clyde. Clyde. I'm fine. very sorry. No, you, 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 and you called out to Moonbot, who's an actual bot. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fine. Whoops. <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's okay. We have to thank our robot friends. We do. Well. Once they uh, take over, you know. We there you go. You might be one of the saved. <laughs> all right. So let's get into it. First of all, uh, the PTB. So, uh, very important. There will be a PTB this weekend, uh, which means a public uh, test build. Uh, that's an alternate build you can get on Steam by entering a keyword in there. All the information will be given to you uh, on every single piece of uh, social media. Uh, so you'll be able to play an alternate build of the game in which you'll be able to test the emblems system. What's the emblem system, you ask? I do ask, what is the emblem system? Uh, we'll talk about that on the panel in a little bit when Thomas comes in to talk about his work. All right. Uh, there you go. Next thing, the next community event, I'm supposed to know if I'm supposed to talk about that. There is a community event coming. It's awesome. There's going to be, oh, yes, I just got a reply from Olivier telling me I'm allowed to talk about this. So do you have the, the community event slide? That thing? Okay. So what's in the next community event, you ask? I do ask. What's, what's in the next community event? Tell me more. <laughs> All right. So... You will be able to get special offerings during that community event. Ooh. If you play that offering, it'll have an impact on how the game is uh, generated. It'll unlock in-game objectives. Really? You are very good at acting surprised. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you will be able to work on personal and community challenges. Mm -hmm. You will be able to win character customization. Uh, admire in-game and menu theme changes and you will be able to gather new items. Ooh. Well, I can imagine the chat's already blown up. Uh, can you tell us what the items are? No. No, no I can't. <laughs> it's a surprise. However, uh, I will take this moment to uh, tell my friendly uh, mods in that uh, little channel there that I am not looking at the chat because it's scrolling way too fast and it's on this side, so please relay the questions to me in the usual fashion. So that's the next community event that's happening imminently. Mm, that's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the survey for the Saw chapter. Ooh. So uh, like we did with the winter event, we released a survey for the Saw chapter. And again, people have spoken. Yeah. Was yeah. Well, the, the, the Saw chapter had over 18,000 people answering, which is Wow, pretty that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and this one, I think, was even a little more successful. So uh, let's go through the numbers quickly here. Oh, okay. So the Saw chapter, uh, you told us a little bit. 22,000 people and change uh, answered the survey from 150 different countries. That's impressive. Almost 9,000 had something to say, as in putting actual words and the feedback Hopefully and then wasn't, uh, game. the Just average game. game time was 436 hours that's weird is it oh no that probably makes sense it's a chapter i was yeah. comparing to the the winter event oh okay so really cool uh next slide we have okay so the feedback 3.5 stars uh they rated fun and good content 71 percent of the respondents own the chapter uh, and then the top things, the meat plant, the look uh, was really, really appreciated. The pig also in Detective Tap, uh, the power of the pig, and then uh, last was the Gideon meat plant gameplay. Mm. So uh, overall, very positive perks rating. There you go. I won't read this, but uh, make your choice. Obviously, a big favorite. Personally, I really, really like Hangman's Trick, but it's just because it fits in well with my playstyle. Yeah. Uh, and about the design changes, 
Uh, yeah, so the blink change was obviously uh, very appreciated. I'm surprised that the palette distribution didn't make it higher on the list. Maybe because it's more of a subtle change yeah. in the background. It's harder to pinpoint. Uh, but overall, it was very positive. Mm. Uh, there you go. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not getting any uh, questions from uh, my mod. So I will assume nobody's asking anything. Let's go on. Uh, there are... Events happening this weekend, I don't have the list. So Gabriel, who is usually sitting here with me, is uh, feeling ill and under the weather. So she's at home resting. Uh, get better, please. Please. Uh, but uh, so there are events happening this weekend, which I cannot shout out to properly because I have no clue what the hell they are. Dang. <laughs> so there. Uh, a little note here, humble, uh, humble store. Uh, put us as best of 2017. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's super cool. Up top for that. Woo. There you go. Uh, and uh, I believe their promotion might be ended, but you can check uh, on the Humble Monthly. You could have it for 10 bucks, I think. So that's, that's a pretty uh, good deal. Yeah. Uh, okay, do you have an answer for last week's lore question? Which killer fought against the entity the most? Ooh, yeah. Mm. I don't have this one. Uh, I, I didn't manage to get the uh, the answer. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting a message. Ah, okay. That's uh, Olivier. Uh, the brand director is telling me things during the stream. So very, very uh, last minute here. Hmm. Uh, up to the minute, not last minute. Hmm. Well, last yeah. minute sometimes. Uh, so don't no, I don't know which killer fought uh, the most against the entity before they became a killer. Uh, tough one it's tough and mm. some might fight not because they they're against doing that job but they're just fighters they're yeah. just people who don't like doing what others want them to do i could say my own personal opinion what do you think uh, well i obviously i would think the trapper probably fought the most why uh, like you said he's just a fighter in general i don't foresee him as a character that would ideally go uh with what the entity would want Maybe. And, he's uh, and McLean is saying it should be the rate because Philip was actually a good guy. That's true. Maybe. He wasn't that good. Yeah, he wasn't that good. Did kill people. That's not good. Uh, Matter of fact, the, the canon in my head was the Trapper was so filled with hooks is because he would not listen to the entity. Yeah, that might uh, make sense. We'll have to get to the bottom of this one. Hmm. Uh, Will you consider allowing us to obtain more than one perk per blood web now that there are so many more perks added to the game? It's a mm. very good question. Yeah. Uh, it's not part of the plan for sure. But uh, yeah, well, we, we know that uh, adding more perks every time we add new characters puts a lot of strain on the game mechanics. Mm, yeah. And we'll have to find ways to make that work properly. So maybe we reach a point where we go, yeah, the blood web as it stands does not really allow us to deal with that amount of perks. So yeah. maybe. But for now, I think we're we're, we're still OK. Uh, win customization items? Is there a chance that I cannot get the new items? You are absolutely correct. There are uh, possibilities that you might not get the item. So when the event happens, play. Yeah, <laughs> because there are personal challenges as well as community challenges. So if you're not participating in the personal challenges, then you might not get the items. Don't worry, the challenges are pretty fun. Uh, the community event will not happen at the same time as the PTB. So the PTB is over the weekend, this weekend. The community event is not this weekend. We don't have uh, time to give you right now, but it is not this weekend. So you'll have time to play the PTB and enjoy yourself and, uh, and it's, you know, play with the new rules. Uh, give us your thoughts on that uh, and then uh, you'll be able to enjoy the community event with the rest of the people afterwards. I have a few questions here. Uh, right. Last week, uh, I apologize, last week was a crazy day where I ended up not having time to get the answers for the Q&A, so I didn't ask them. But I have the ones for uh, today, so let's go. All right. Uh, is Haddonfield ever going to be looked at again? It's still a nightmare to chase good survivors through any of the two-story houses. So there was a change in the uh, patch with the Saw chapter, uh, with the way the windows, the random generation of the windows, so it's a little less random. There's more rules to the procedural system. Mm. Uh, and also there's a thing where you can't have two of those houses next to each other. 
Hmm. So this should have been uh, changed already. If we feel like it's still unpleasant to play in, we'll make more changes, but they most likely are going to be systemic changes that affect the whole procedural generation system or the whole maps, uh, rather than a specific change to, uh, to this one. Yeah. Uh, is there any ideas on reworking the totem system? Uh, many ideas. Yes, uh, either on the which perks are X perks and also the way that the totems are interacted with. Uh, is there going to be uh, an original killer that has more usage out of crows? We have a few ideas with uh, killers that play with the animal kingdom, and uh, yes, it's some really good it's ideas. It's in the list. Actually. Yeah. <coughs> Have you thought about reworking the perk, we're going to live forever to encourage more stealth play? No. We're going to live forever is all about showing off, body blocking, and putting yourself in the middle of danger. So it would make no sense to make it a stealth play. Uh, oh, can we get a crawler about the PTB dates? <laughs> can you put a crawler, please, with the PTB dates? So it's this weekend. It's as usual, it's going to be from the earliest possible on Friday to the latest possible Sunday. Uh, when you fix pallet spawning rules, will you decrease the pallet vacuum and the, put the stun back in the middle of your animation? Uh, these two things, the generation and the spawning of pallets, and then the pallet vacuum and the stun are completely different things. Yep. So they are not uh, th they they're not connected at all. But yes, we want to fix that. Uh, but but it's not happening at the moment. How long is it going to take uh, to fix the nurse's double stun bug? It's fixed yeah. in the last patch. However, there might be a few edge cases where she still has a wipe after something she shouldn't. But I think it's a very uh, it's it's not occurring often. So we'll uh, we'll 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 see if there are more fixes coming. But the main one was fixed. Uh, any plans for a new asylum map? So I asked that to Matt Walker and he went, HA! That's his answer that I have right there. Nice. I can actually hear that in my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, McLean, we should not post this. Okay. Would it be possible for the community to create some killer powers uh, you choose from your three favorite ideas and the community can vote for one of the three and the next killer will get this power? Uh, yeah, this, uh, this led to a very long conversation. Uh, essentially, Powers are much bigger. Maybe perks would be a better way to do that. And also because if we do that, then people would scream to get the other two powers that were left out uh, at some point. So, uh, but yeah, we absolutely want to involve the community uh, as much as we can. In this case, probably more on the perk side than on the power side. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a good idea. Uh, Freddy has been out for a while now. Can you please share some Freddy-related stats, such as average number of kills or the average game rating, uh, if Freddy is the killer? So there's two things on that. First of all, Julien, who's our stats person, is currently uh, taking care of a newborn baby. Oh, Very yeah, happy yeah. for him. Yeah. Uh, but it means that we get a lot of raw stats and we don't analyze it as efficiently as we usually do. We have to do it ourselves. Yeah, understandably. Uh, so he's going to come back. Uh, and also right now, if we look at Freddy, there is still a, a slightly higher rate of disconnects against Freddy than other killers. And that skews some of the stats. So it's a little difficult for us to have that. Yeah. Uh, the PTB is on Steam only. Yes, that's absolutely worth sharing and worth putting on the crawler. It is for PC only, not console. Uh, yeah, so, uh, oh, and uh, Gabriel is here. Hi, Gab. Hope you get better. All right. I have a question here from Lucille is a vampire bat. <laughs> That's a nice name. <laughs> Worth mentioning. Yeah. Uh, in the last stream, you wanted to talk about the golden toolbox, mm -hmm. uh, but we ran out of time. Yeah. It was not the last stream. It was the one before. So can we talk about it? Yes. Okay. So... Uh, the the reason really wow that's incredible yeah so uh, well you know uh, yeah but keep asking those questions we like that all right uh, once you guys said that you want to hide totems better do you maybe have any possible changes for the totem system 
uh, maybe some kind of anti-expert. So we talked about the, the fool's greed, I think it was called. It was a very popular one. It's still in the books that we want to do this at some point. Uh, but mostly the two things that we want to do is make sure that no survivors spawn near the hex totem. And the other thing is uh, to make sure that the killer spawns really close to that hex totem yeah. so that he can start patrolling around and yeah. making sure that it's uh, safe. Uh, that would help immensely already. Tons, actually. Yeah. Uh, any plans for advanced settings? I have a 144 hertz monitor. Want to go behind uh, beyond 60 FPS, and I don't want to mess with config. No, we don't have plans for advanced settings at this point. Sorry. Uh, we we keep optimizing and we keep making improvements, but not this kind of specific thing. Uh, when will you bring back community events? Oh, well. <laughs> uh, hang on to your knickers is the note I put there. That's a good note. An event, it's kind of stopped and fell flat after we lost that one event, and I kind of still want those Huntress David King cosmetics. Uh, bring back community events, please. There you go. Oh, there's that. Wish answered. granted. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we have here crouching with the pig is not very effective because the loud noise she makes when beginning to lunge. Is this intended or will it be tweaked to make ambush attack more viable? <coughs> Again, this one is twofold. One of the sounds that you hear is a sound that's for every single killer. It's when a killer stays uh, quiet for a, a certain amount of time. There's this stinger that plays. This will be removed from the pig. Mm. It's, a, it's a mistake. We didn't notice it. We'll fix it. The other one is the roar. It's by design. Yep. The one thing that we're thinking of as a balance thing, we might actually put the roar at the end of the lunge instead of at the beginning, mm -hmm. so that you still get that a little more of that surprise. Yeah, but we'll see. Okay, that'd be pretty cool if it was at the end. Uh, oh, what's that? Okay. Okay, so roar intended, insidious design one to remove. There you go. Uh, then we have, uh, that's it. That's all the questions I had for this. Uh, so I hope that works for you guys. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, good question list. I'm supposed to have uh, Thomas uh, coming here. I believe I? He's, uh, he's in the, the all hands meeting. So right now the whole studio is uh, mm. in, uh, in a meeting where uh, every single, yeah, yeah, you can go and grab him by the scruff of the neck and bring him here, please. <laughs> Uh, so that we can actually talk about the PTB and the emblem system and everything that's coming. So if you have a few questions right now, it's a good time to ask because I cannot show stuff from the web without Bjorn and uh, I would love to do that, but I can't. Well, I'd love to read some questions, but yes. kind of blowing up there. Uh, try. Mm. Can console get legacy prestige? No. No, no. Sorry, guys. The people on PC who got the Legacy Prestige earned it by going through a terrible grind. Oh, it was, <laughs> it was pretty intense. <laughs> oh, there oh, he is. Great. All right, well. Well, uh, that's it. I'm going to kick you out. Thank you very much Thank for uh, stopping by. No problem. Uh, uh, say a goodbye to our viewers. Thank Bye, you. guys. Okay. Uh, and, uh, oh, people who get reported actually get banned. Spoiler, they do. Sarah said Thomas is on his way. Okay, so everybody's... Oh, there you are. I am here now. So I think that Bjorn is actually looking for you in the All Ends meeting. Oh, right. That's okay. He's going to come back. Uh, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Uh, are you excited to get uh, the emblem system in the hands of people finally? I am. I'm very excited to be able to talk about it, show what we did, and yeah, get it in your hands for the weekend. How long have you been working on that? Uh, we started the initial work something like four or five months ago. Yeah. Uh, so it's been yeah quite a long time. We we thought about it and took the time to integrate it. So uh, we're ready. Can we start? All right then. Let's do this. Let's go. So, um, first, first thing first, uh, what is the emblem system and what are we trying to do? Uh, just to summarize quickly, uh, what we want to do is to create a new ranking system to be able to evaluate your performance during a match, uh, mm -hmm. which is going to be um, similar both for killer and survivors, trying to avoid the split that we currently have between the way we evaluate the performance of both. Um, also, making sure that uh, it's um, separated from your income of blood points. 
So we'll come back to this later. But the emblems are basically um, items representative of your performance that you're gonna see in the tally screen at the end of a match. Uh, there are four of them. Um, so each of them is going to be evaluated as you play. Uh, so we are going to gauge uh, different things and different behaviors in order to be able to give you uh, an, uh, an emblem at the end of a match. I'm going to interrupt you right here for two things. First of all, can we get that special thing around the screen that tells you this is not live game? This is still part of the design. It's going to be part of the PTB, and then when we remove the PTB, then this will, will make it into the game later when exactly. we're satisfied with it. Yeah. Uh, and then the second thing is, just to reiterate and make sure people understand, this is completely separated from the blood points you get and the progression of your characters. Absolutely. I will go a bit more in depth uh, in the next slide about that, but this is purely to evaluate your ranking as a survivor or as a killer, and it has no effect on your progression otherwise. Well, m there are many things that are uh, sort of rated by boat so there's a good chance that if you're getting 20,000 plus blood points you're also getting a pretty good yeah. set of emblems but it, they are not it's not a one-to-one -one relationship but chances are good that if you play um, correctly and you actually get a good amount of blood points you will get good emblems as well because you show um, like good behaviors and the kind of um, uh, things which are rewarded in game. So even though there is not an exact correlation, the two are unlikely to be completely unbalanced. There you go. Next slide. So why a new system? As we we're saying, uh, we want to be able to encourage a different viable play styles. For example, uh, at the moment, as a killer, you have to hook and to kill in order to be able to rank up. And having a good game can mean a lot of different things. You can apply a lot of pressure on the survivors without actually hooking them and still have a good match. Um, same for the survivors. You can focus on generators. You can focus on healing hovers. There are a lot of things you can do. And we want to be able to like reward you accordingly based on what you decide to play during the match. Does this replace pips? No, pips are still there. What it does is that this is what is going to um, Evaluate the amount of pips you win or you lose. There you go. Um, so, yeah, the game does not expect you to be consistently good at everything. You can't have an amazing match. Like, it can happen that you have an amazing match where you unhook everyone, you do the gems, you escape, but that's not necessarily the case. And even though you do one of those things very well, that can still be a good match worth rewarding with one pip or two. So, we want to bring more uh, granularity to that. Will this yes. also replace the current killer victory conditions that rely solely on sacrificing? Absolutely, oh. it does. There we go. Um, we want to create opposition. That's the other big thing. Um, yeah. Even if you were based on blood points in order to be able to, to win or lose pips, uh, you can still grind them without um, caring about what the other is actually doing. So you can grind as a killer or you can grind as a survivor, but there isn't necessarily an strong interaction between the two sides. So the idea with the emblems is that they are in opposition with each other. You have four uh, for each side and they compete. Meaning that if uh, survivors need to repair gen, for example, then killer has to um, make it so the gens are not repaired. So they are directly in opposition with each other, creating more friction and more conflict. And chances are high that if you actually uh, progress well in one of your emblem, uh, you are impacting uh, the other side. So if you perform super well in repairing gens, then chances are the killer is not, and so his emblem is going to go down. Uh, and finally, we want to separate the currency income and the ranking, uh, which opens the door for a lot of things that we can do in the future. We can rework a lot of like scoring events mm -hmm. and make a lot of adjustments in the blood points you win, knowing that all it will affect is your progression and how much you can evolve your character without actually impacting your ranking. So having the two systems completely separate uh, give us way more freedom in, in the, the balancing that we can do on both of them. So those are the reasons why. Now uh, we're gonna go in details in what are the emblems and how do they work. So uh, as we were saying, emblems come in uh, four different qualities uh, from bronze. <laughs> to iridescent, 
Uh, the one that you see on the left being the absence of emblem. It's possible that if you don't perform well at all in one of the category, you won't receive anything. That can happen. Um, Will the emblem system punish campers? So it's supposed if you camp and if you actually only care about securing, securing one kill. or two kills, you're going to miss out on so many other things you can do to make your emblems progress you shouldn't be able to peep or it should be way harder for you even though you can do it it's actually not the best way to do it at all so as much as possible we want to make it so camping is not the option you should refer to if you want to uh, rank up um by the way i just want to give a quick shout out to bucket who made all those icons several times that's been a like long work and they look amazing so congrats um yeah she's good so each of those emblems is going to progress during the game you don't you don't see the progression but once you are in your tally screen you're going to see each of those emblems at the quality uh, associated with your performance so as i said it can go from nothing bronze silver gold and iridescent iridescent rewarding an amazing contribution uh, it's unlikely that you will get four iridescent emblems un un unless you play amazingly well. But if you focus on one thing and you do it really well, you will get iridescent in this category. Um, once you get your four emblems, the overall quality of the four is going to dictate how many pips you win or you lose. So, but how? So how? Each of those emblems um, is associated with an amount of points going from zero to four, uh, zero being the absence of the emblem. Uh, then we sum all the, the emblems you got, and this amount is going to dictate uh, the amount of pips you're gonna get. So four, in order to, to, to get your safety pip, which is the equivalent of four bronze, four bronze is enough, uh, eight in order to get your first pip, and 13 in order to get your second. There you go. So now let's have a look at each individual emblems. All right. So uh, let's start with the first one, uh, the generators. Uh, the um, survivors are going to have the light bringer emblem, and the killers will have the gatekeeper one. Um, both focus on how much, like, how, how are you able to complete generators as a survivor, and how much pressure are you able to apply as a killer to delay those, uh, those generators from being uh, repaired. So for the survivors, it's uh, fairly straightforward. Each um, point that you, you, you make, like each progress that you make inside the generator is going to give you a point. And this amount of point is going to dictate the quality of the light bringer emblem. Every progress is counted, even though the generator is regressed, even though you fail a skill check. That so doesn't do matter. you get more points if the killer actually breaks it and then you go back to fix it and then he breaks it again and then you go back to fix it? Yes, because that's a generator which took more time to do. Okay. Um, on the other side, you have a gatekeeper. So every second, uh, passively, killers are going to get points based on the amount of unrepaired generators on the map. So if generators are done very quick and you actually have a hard time to secure them, you're gonna get less points per second because there are less generators remaining uh, non-repaired, non-completed, I should say, on the map. Uh, but if you're able to secure even, even a few of them for a long time uh, and actually apply pressure so survivors are not able to complete them, uh, you're gonna get a good amount of points. So there's a, an interesting question here. Uh, can multiple survivors all get the iridescent emblem? Or is it like only one of them will be able to make enough? To no. So for this one specifically, it's possible if you all repair the generators together, for example, the four of you on all generators, you could potentially all get iridescent. That's very unlikely, but that could happen. Mm -hmm. So you are not, th there is no disadvantage to working together. We don't but want you to put you in a position. Yeah. Um, okay, the next one? Uh, just one more thing for, yes. the, um, for the killer. You are highly rewarded for actually finishing the match with non-completed generator on the map. So if you kill everyone before the five generators are done, for example, you also get a uh, boost on that one. Yeah, okay. bonus. That's good. Emblem number two, uh, ability to survive. So unbroken. Uh, uh, wait, wait, just a sec. How do brand new parts affect the Lightbringer emblem? Uh, brand new parts should 
because you complete it faster, you should get, you, you're gonna get, if you're able to complete 100% of a generator with a brand new board, you should be able to get your 100% of right. points. Um, unbroken for the survivors versus devout for the killer. Um, this is going to focus on your ability to escape alive as a survivor and to kill as a killer. So this unbroken emblem is only going to be awarded to you if you're able to escape alive. If you die, you will get nothing. And the quality of this emblem is going to depend on the amount of time you got downed. So the more you get downed, the less of the quality, knowing that if you escape, no matter what, you will get the minimum quality of bronze. You cannot get below this threshold. Um, but the idea behind it is that uh, you can play with the amount of times you can get it as a resource. If you get it once and you actually go and heal, you won't be penalized for that. But if you actually get downed, you will lose points in this category. Right. Uh, Devout, on the other hand, is uh, focusing only on sacrifices and mores. So bleeding out to death do not bring you points because we don't want to encourage slug. Um, but this is basically the previous winning condition for the killer made as one emblem. So what we care about is are you able to kill and to, and to mori? Because that's still one of the things you're supposed to do as a killer. But that's one out of four emblems now. Uh, will there still be rank resets? Yes, for now this doesn't change. Uh, this is something else that we, we, we want to have a look at. Um, we know that rank reset but every month is a bit harsh, this. but that's a different topic. Okay. Next one. Number three, uh, your ability to perform as a team and be altruistic toward each other versus your ability to apply pressure on survivors and actually make it so they can't help each other. Um, so benevolent versus malicious. Uh, as a, this is the most complex one. Uh, benevolent as a survivor means that each time someone is gonna be injured or downed or hooked, everyone is gonna lose points in this emblem. When the state is reversed, so if you heal someone injured, if you unhook someone hooked, you get back the points you lost, everyone gets them back. And the person who actually uh, performed the action is gonna get a bonus. The idea being, if everyone in your team is selfish, everyone is going to go down together in this emblem. Uh, but if you're actually helping out each other, even though you are not the one participating directly, if your team is benevolent, uh, you will not lose points because you will get back everything that you lose. If you are the one actually deciding to help others and heal and unhook, you will get a bonus associated to that. Uh, on the other hand, malicious uh, works exactly in reverse. So you get points each time you are able to injure or down a survivor and those points are lost when the state is reversed, so when the person is, is healed. Uh, you, you will also get points when you hook someone, uh, and, but this time the points are not lost if an unhook is, uh, is performed. Meaning that as soon as you hook, you get your points, they are secured, there is no in incentive for you to actually camp the person, go do something else and go eat someone else, uh, the points are yours. Uh, Self-care doesn't affect benevolent, right? Uh, okay, so self-care um, is going to make everyone win back the points they lost just because the state is reversed. Mm -hmm. But because you can't really be benevolent toward yourself, you're not going to get the bonus as... For healing yourself. As okay. in, yeah, for healing yourself, sense. exactly. Uh, someone was asking about uh, the hatch counts as an escape, obviously. Yeah, absolutely, that, that, that's the same thing. And the last one? And the last one, evader versus chaser. Uh, so that's personally the one I'm the most excited about because the idea behind it, behind it is to reward stealth as a way to um, escape and win points uh, or just confront the killer. You are still able to do that, but both options are available to you. So how does it work? You win points passively by being around the killer and remaining unseen, so not triggering a chase. The closer you are, the more points you win. So if you actually uh, get around the killer and manage to hide in a very close spot, your amount of points is gonna, is gonna increase at a way faster pace than if you stay on the other way of the map and never see the killer. Uh, you will still win points, but way more slowly. 
Um, you will also win points if you get in a chase that you manage to escape. Uh, the condition for escaping being uh, you don't get hit. Yeah. If you get hit during the chase, it's considered one for the killer and you will win no points. If you are able to escape the chase without being hit, you will get points. Uh, the points being basically put inside the pool, growing as the chase goes on. So as soon as a chase is started, there's points accumulated and either the survivor gets it by stopping the chase or the killer gets it by hitting the survivor. Exactly. So that's and in this case, the winner of a chase gets, gets the whole of points. Exactly. Cool. That makes sense. Uh, and so chaser on the other way for the for the killer rewards your ability to actually spot survivor and trigger chases. Landing a hit, so winning the chase, also brings a big amount of points, and you get additional points if the chase has been long and successful. There we go. So that's it for the overview of the of the different emblems. Um, there is one more slide dedicated to what we expect during the PTB, just to let you know what we are looking for and what we encourage you to do. So play as much as you want. Uh, we want to gather data from a wide range of players and from very different skill levels. Uh, the idea being that we'll be able to see, OK, how many times are you able to get those emblems? At which pace? Uh, is there an issue with some of them? So we can refine our balancing based on that. And the more data we have available, the better. So. Just play. Please play as much as you want. Um, there will be a survey once the, um, once the uh, PTB ends. Uh, what we're looking for is more uh, qualitative feedback. So we'll have the ability to, you, you will have the possibility to express yourself. So please do. Any yep. constructive, qualitative comment is going to help us to make design adjustments. It's not all about balancing. There are things that we are already aware of and we want to change. There are things that we're going to discover with you. So. Everything that you can tell us about how you feel about the emblems, what works, what doesn't, uh, is going to help us to make uh, design adjustments before an actual release. Yeah. Uh, and finally, try to understand the inner working of the emblems, like how they work exactly, what they, what they reward, and how they reward it. And try to be playful with them, like try to, to maximize one maximize emblem, one try emblem, to for example. make someone lose their you know, make sure that the killer doesn't get his emblem. Absolutely. Whatever. Like one one game, you can decide to be fully altruistic and do only benevolent. What happens if you do that? The other game, you can try to be yeah. super selfish and do only gems. What happens? Uh, so yeah, just be playful and like enjoy playing with a system. And everything you can tell us based on your feelings is gonna is gonna be super valuable for us. So that's a, a lot of information that we just gave people. Uh, it's fine, you can go over and watch it again. But uh, really, the important thing is, if you want to take part in the PTB and help us make this the best possible system to put in the live game afterwards, just play it. That, that's it, really. Just play the game, check the results at the end. It takes five minutes to check the, uh, the tally screen and look at it and, and give us your comments. But even just playing without giving us our, your comments will help because we need more stats, we need Absolutely. more people playing the game and data to, uh, to analyze. Uh, and if you give us your comments in the survey, and, and, and as you said, mostly how you feel about stuff and how you, like, it, 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 what's your impression instead of trying to describe exactly what happened because that we get from the exactly. data. Exactly. So what we're looking for is how you feel. Yeah. Everything factual, we get it from the data. What we want to know is how you feel about it and, and how you express it to us. Yeah. Uh, uh, just a quick note also. Uh, Gabriel will post on all the social, uh, the social, the social networks uh, tomorrow. I believe on how to uh, take part in the PTB. It's going to be over the weekend only because the crawler is not there anymore. Uh, and uh, yeah, so tomorrow we'll tell you exactly how to get in. You'll need to download a, a, an alternate version of the game, and then it's going to be over the weekend only, which starts usually early, early on, on Friday and ends uh, late, late, late on Sunday. So yeah, please help us uh, make this a very, very cool feature that we can then uh, broadcast the rest of the community. I think that's it. Oh, do have, do you have to start Perkless on the PTB? Starter points may be nice instead and get people to play if it's the case. No, so as far as I understand on the PTB, it'll load your save game from the regular game, but it will not save. 
So you will not have any progression on the PTB itself. You will be able to spend your points, you will be able to use your, your, game, your game, but you will not be able to save any of the progress that you're doing on the PTB because we know that it's not a version that's perfectly calibrated, so we don't want to screw up everybody. Uh, so there's no save on the PTB, but there is load. <coughs> Uh, and yes, technically, in Kill Your Friends, you can try out everything. Absolutely. It also works on PTB. Uh, that's it, Liddy. I don't uh, think we have anything else. We may have a few other questions that pop in, but for now, I would like to go to my favorite part of the show, uh, which is what I found around the web this week. Uh, as, uh, oh, Gabriel's got a quick note. I'm on standby. Oh, we can show the first one. Uh, the first one is from a user called uh, Anupaten, I believe, who uh, has been uh, showing us stuff before. Thank you very much. That's uh, Doctor Eating Blood Points. It's amazing. Uh, on the PTB, what does it say here? Uh, Oh yeah, if you bring all the Insta items and the add-ons and you just play the game with every single uh, top quality stuff because right. you know you're not going to waste them, uh, is is going to screw things up a little. So try to be a little moderate. Don't just go in there with all the moris and all the brand new parts and everything else. Absolutely. Uh, okay. The second one I have is from Beer A80 Ita Beer Ita. I don't know. Very nice little uh, fun. I have a uh, cat enthusiast. It is really nice. Billy, I think there were a few others uh, in that series. It was really cool. Thank you for that. Uh, the next is uh, Cheshire Cat, who's showing us their really cool uh, Huntress ink. That, that picture could have been put in a different direction. That's fine. Darrow, Dero. There you go. Really cool little uh, kill that doodle. Some talented people out there. Uh, fat cat burglar. I, I, I just love it. Yeah, it, it always works. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the goofy smile of this blind trapper. Uh, Gog HTV, I think, was streaming wearing that super creepy trapper mask. Very nice. Thank you for that. Then we have ICE, uh, or ICE maybe? Maybe it's ICE. Yeah, that, that sounds <laughs> like ICE. Uh, so thank you. Then we have uh, Kevdivila, that's really, really cool nice. nurse cosplay. There were a few other pictures. Go check it out. It's absolutely worth your time. Uh, KC Oi Kekoi. This also, I love when we get to see completely different styles uh -huh. applied to our, our work. Uh, it's really cool. There were a few others, but I tried to restrain myself from putting more than one piece from the same artist uh, in a single week. Uh, Night Avaris is my current desktop background. <laughs> nice. Thank you for this. It's beautiful. We all need a little Trapper love. Uh, Luddles. Uh, you know. Alternate costume, maybe? Yeah. Actually, she's wearing Ace's costume. Right. <laughs> then we have NB here. Very playful, so nice. Uh, and David King's a giant. Nicolas Askeva. Uh, Not sure what the full story is here, but I will allow it. Then Pfschski. PHSFG, I believe. Again, uh, the killer's munching on blood points. What's the thing with eating blood points? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but I'm okay with that. Then we have Spider Whispers. It's really cool. Uh, but it, yeah. Again, I might be wrong uh, with some of the credits in here. If you have the real ones, please tell me. Uh, then Ushite Moku is a very, very buff doctor here. Yeah, yeah, a little scary. It's good. And then Cactus Fruit, once again, leaves us on this pleasant little 
note for Valentine's Day, which is next week. So hopefully next week on the stream, I can show a bunch of art inspired by Valentine's Day for Dead by Daylight. So artists out there, to your uh, pens and graphic tablets, and let's make this full of love. Okay, so that was the uh, fun part of the what's around the web. I have a question. How do hatchets, traps, chainsaw, shock therapy affect the chasing emblem for killers? Uh, so for the chasing, it's not going to impact your... So if you're able to land the hit uh, during the chase, you're going to get your points. So if you're able to land the hatchet hit, uh, you should get your points as yeah. by closing the chase. Uh, it should also impact the amount of points uh, you're going to get for malicious. So uh, injuring survivors, not only through eating, but through other means as well. Oh. Uh, okay, so I'll go back to the news and announcements quickly. Uh, the PTB is this weekend. The PTB is the public test build that will test the emblem system, which we talked about. It is on Steam, so on PC only. And it's this weekend only, and you get no, uh, you get a load of your save, but you do not get to save your progress from there. Uh, tomorrow, Gabriel is gonna tell you everywhere how to get in on the PTB action. Then we have the next community event, which we talked about a little bit at the beginning of the show. Uh, okay. Uh, the community event, the next community event, is actually for PC console for everybody. It's the next community event. You're going to be able to uh, play special offerings that will trigger in-game objectives and you'll be able to win some really cool cosmetics, so be there. Uh, the SAW survey, we showed it, over 22,000 people actually answered. It was amazing. That's I think great. it's a great success for us, so we'll keep doing those surveys more and more so we can make sure to pinpoint exactly what it is that you want from new content from new events and we'll make them better with that. Uh, then there was a few uh, weekend events which I can't really shout out and I shouldn't mention but if things are written on my agenda I will say them so we have to be very careful with that. Uh, and Humble Bundle gave us, uh, the Humble Store actually made us the uh, best of 2017 which we are happy about. That's it for today. I will leave you with words of wisdom from uh, Aldous Oxley, uh, better known uh, for uh, writing The Doors of Perception, which were actually the reason for the band The Doors to pick their name. Really? Yeah. I learned something. There you go. Uh, and his quote for today is, The secret of genius is to carry the spirit of the child into old age, which means never losing your enthusiasm. So thank you, Mr. Huxley. Uh, that's it for us. Thank you very much, Bjorn. Thanks Thank to you. our mods for being here. Thank you, Thomas and Senor Varas, for joining me today. Bye. Ciao.